FC is on board with it. So it kind of makes you think, oh. what even is the point of an... In this video, I'm mostly going over my training. I got some, some updates to go over. I got a lot going on, man. It has been a hectic couple of weeks. I officially have started training for competition. This is week one. And uh, I have a little bit of a reveal at the end of the video as to who is doing my training. Uh, it's, an, it's an interesting program. Uh, I got some anecdotes to share if any of you guys are in management. and. Uh, are having issues or difficulties navigating that kind of thing at work. I have some lessons that I've learned. Uh, life's been really chaotic, just man stuff, managing things. It's been a it's been an interesting week. But one thing I have come to realize after a few months of listless drifting in the ocean that I am much better when I have an anvil hanging over my head, which is what competition provides. And was that one of the questions, uh, why do you compete at the age of 50? You know, one thing I have noticed, just having that anvil or that goal, that target over my head, it just mentally shifts me a little and I push a little bit harder and I'm a little more focused and a little more driven and I stay on schedule. Those days where uh, training's optional and I don't feel like going hard and now becomes something you have to do. You know, and then as opposed to interfering with your schedule, it, it is what your schedule now revolves around. So it just does a, it does a lot for people like me, you know, uh, not to say that all alcoholics, drug addicts, people that are anxious, uh, addictive personalities, not to say we're all the same. But one thing I've observed over the years working with a lot of drug, uh, drug addicts and alcoholics is sometimes having a goal can really you know center a person you focus them does it solve all your problems no no but it just it can give you a it can give you a little bit of meaning that drive that purpose you know and maybe maybe it is taking 20 pounds off or you know or maybe it's putting 20 pounds on and it doesn't even have to be weightlifting. um it could be you know getting a promotion at work or uh working something out with your family you know if you set a goal and you have a structured uh path outline if you will to get to that goal having that can really really be helpful so that's the first thing i always ask the guys when they're you know <clears throat> fresh out of rehab or recovery is like what are your goals what are you trying to accomplish for a lot of them it's just like dude i just want to get my family back or i just want to get a job you know they, they have no idea what their plans are well start planning let's do it let's get that pen and paper and start writing I'm, I'm just as much of a mess at today as I was when I first got sober. The only difference is not that uh, drugs and alcohol are no longer a problem. You know, I'm not worried. I'm not sitting on my hands, you know, pining for that next drink. That's not an issue anymore. But, you know, life is still life. Life's problems don't go anywhere. As a matter of fact, they compound. And, um, you know, not having that... I've noticed that uh, when I don't have that competition go over my head... Um, I I do have a tendency to let things spiral out of control a little bit. I've, it's it's just an observation I've made about myself. So I already feel just committing to competing and starting the program, I feel a million times better with just that simple mental switch. It's amazing. If you guys make it towards the end of this video, I have some footage of my daughter and I sparring together. Uh, the trainer that we're working with, he wants her to do an amateur fight under his boxing name, uh, him being the trainer, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so we actually have to get her license in the state of Nevada. <laughs> I was like, that's, wow, that's interesting. I, I don't know how, I, I don't know much about that kind of thing. You know, me being a competitive power lifter, I know you have to register with the Federation. And I don't know if it's a whole lot different with fighting, but I know that, uh, Boxing and combat sports are highly regulated, so uh, I, I guess there's a lot to do with that. I mean, I, I figured it would just be as simple as her training for six months and then they set something up at the gym, but no, it's actually, um, he's talking about her being legitimate. Uh, six months is what we're looking at. Um, of course, this is 100% up to her. You know, if she doesn't want to do it, I'm not going to force her or push her to. Uh, well, 
I'm going to encourage her to, and I'll be training with her. But uh, just so, you know, like I get a lot of comments that are like, is your daughter doing this because she wants to, or is she doing it just because you're doing it? Honestly, I don't know. Sometimes I think she's doing it just because she likes hanging out with dad. But when I ask her, she seems like really excited about it. And she says that she's the one that said she wanted to fight. And we explained to her what that entails. And uh, she's all about it. You know, she seems like she's really excited about it. Hey, if that changes, it changes. You know, like I said, I'm not, <clears throat> I've never tried to force my kids to do anything. But I've always tried to encourage them to at least try as much as they can. Just to see what it is they're interested in. And then, you know... I do want to also encourage them to pick something and stick with it. You know, uh, we've done a lot of things that they've given up on guitar lessons, you know, to name one of them, a $350 Fender Stratocaster that's collecting dust, you know, and guitar lessons that have gone to waste, to name one of many. But it's like, uh, now that they're getting a little bit older, my son's, uh, he's doing the boxing with us and he's got, he has some talents too. And he's, he's a standout amongst his peers, the coach has noted. Um, now whether or not he wants to follow the same path, that's completely up to him, but, uh, he's going to be playing football here. So that's really cool. I told him I played football when I was his age. So that, uh, you know, I'll be there for the, man, I'm turning into a soccer mom. Wow. <laughs> Except for instead of a soccer ball, it's boxing gloves and, and oh, football gear is expensive. Man, I remember. That's okay. We'll figure it out. We always do. I wanted to do a response to content creator uh, Doe Jangles Climb, uh, awesome athlete, martial artist, uh, rock climber, just all around amazing, amazing athlete. Uh, so much stronger than me in in in, in the ways that are an antithetical if, to powerlifting, if you will. Uh, stuff that there's skills that I try to maintain on a basic level for all around general physical preparedness, but it's like. Um, if you don't want to be like the strongest guy in the world at picking the heaviest object up one time, but you want to be able to like hang off a cliff by your fingertips for two hours, you know, like, or to be able to do like one arm pull ups and stuff like that, like that totally different skill set. And, uh, my, uh, goal has always been like, well, how do I integrate those to the best of the ability while still specifying in the sport you want to participate in and i'm running into that now with the boxing thing i'm noticing like the the more i throw myself into the combat sports the more it chips away at my upper end ability of maximum strength so there's a balance in there um it's it's still awesome cardio it's easy to maintain my weight you know just working out at the boxing gym with the kids three days a week um, I don't have to do a ton of cardio, uh, it's just maintaining my weight really easily and I'm learning skills, but he did his video. Uh, he was responding to me kind of complaining that I couldn't film at this, this, uh, boxing gym that I go to. They just will not let me film at all. And, um, the owner, um, he's very much interested in promoting the kids as he wants to promote his facility as a family friendly place that kids can get serious training at so it's not like some you know like training at the ymca where the family goes and they learn from some you know retired glo golden gloves guy or whatever you know like he's a real trainer and that's what he's trying to promote but he'll do film snippets and then he'll post them on his uh whatever his outlets are i don't know if it's youtube or instagram and he, he basically has control over it and what i wanted was like you know I'm working my butt off and when I'm in the ring with him, you know, working the mitts or whatever, like I look great, you know, especially when he's correcting me. And I thought of, I just wanted to get some footage of that because it's like showing all the hard work I'm doing and he just won't let me do it. And I'm paying a ton of money. Uh, it's a hundred bucks a month for each of us. So that's $300. And then, you know, a hundred dollars an hour for private sessions. And I thought during the private sessions, he'd let me get footage and he just won't. He's just un, you know, unforgiving on that. And, um, you know, his, his, his excuse is it could make the gym look bad or it could get other people on in the video. And it's like, you, you know, I can edit the videos. It's like, I, you know what I mean? Like I, I just, there's so many things we could do to satisfy those requirements, but he's kind of, I don't know. It's just, it's got me, disheartened because 
what I was saying was when I go to that gym and train for an hour, hour and a half with the kids, I post YouTube videos of me training. So now I don't have any content. So that means if I want to have content, I have to then come home and do a second workout where I'm tired already uh, or I'm training six days a week just so I can get four days a week of content. And it's kind of unsustainable. If you would just let me get a minute or two here and there, um, I wouldn't have to do that. Plus, on top of that, when I come home and I'm training in the gym, I don't have him there to correct me. So I, it's it just uh, you know it's just I don't know it's just the whole thing. And um, it's got me kind of for the money I'm paying. It's got me thinking, yeah, maybe it's time to look for something else. Uh, you know what I mean? Like if you. One thing I've noticed is when you're working with people, it's you're never going to see eye to eye with everybody on everything. But if you can't get a compromise out of somebody, uh, I don't know. Maybe that just means it's time to do something different. You know, uh, it's going to remain a problem, and I don't really see a fix for it. And am I going to continue? It's not like I'm made of money. Like I, that's a car payment. You know. Uh, we just paid our cars off and you know if I'm not getting what I need out of it then why would I continue to do it I guess that's the question I'm wrestling with and he, he made a video responding to that and I wanted to let you know uh, I wrote a comment on that video in response to it and for whatever reason YouTube got rid of it I don't think I said anything offensive. I don't think I disagreed with him on any particular point. Uh, just I shared some more context, and yeah, YouTube got rid of it. So, have you guys been noticing that YouTube comments are disappearing more? I don't know what to correlate that with. I noticed since I started talking about issues other than fitness and weightlifting and powerlifting that a lot of comments have been disappearing. I'm here to tell you right now, I do not delete comments. I have not. I'm not to say I've never. There was one or two, like, super rude ones, but we're talking, like, two or three over a three-year period, you know, where I was just like, I don't want to deal with this guy and delete it. Uh, but rare, rarely, rarely ever will I censor a comment because that's how I get my content. You know, I, I look for smart-ass comments that, are, that we can make fun of. So if you're railing on me, that's content you know so why would i delete that um i don't know i just don't know how what youtube looks for what their triggers are who if they even have a person watching is it a robot that's just scanning for words i don't know man uh well, one thing i can tell you is that youtube is not first amendment friendly whatsoever and it's like you know it's that argument that uh, these businesses they can they can run them however they want and if something is free then we are the product <laughs> you know what i mean so n nothing's free they're making their money somehow uh, and we are all voluntarily on this platform so uh you know there's other platforms you can go to but i don't know is the juice worth the squeeze you know so at the end of the day it comes down to like yeah, you just kind of got to work around it, I guess. But trying to figure out what it is to work around, I don't have no idea. I don't know. What do you guys think? I want to give a shout out to Danny Wolf. Danny Wolfman Strong. Or you know, Daddy Wolf Strongman. Duh. God, I need glasses. I really do. Ugh. Danny, you're an inspiration. Now, why am I shouting Danny out? Danny's one of those guys. And Danny, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you will in the comments. Um, it has a laundry list of health issues that uh, prevented him from being ambulatory. And now he's training to be strongman. And you're talking about competing in October. Um, he's making amazing progress. And he, I can't think of a person that is more inspirational or motivational than Danny. Uh, it, it's one of those, he's the definition of the adage, if I can do it, anyone can do it. You know, it literally leaves you with no excuses. There's just nothing, there's no excuse anyone with any health problem, if they can move a single limb, can give. 
to not get started training. <laughs> you know what I mean? If all you can move is your arm, then train your arm. You know what I mean? It's kind of one of those deals. And uh, I'll say this. Anytime I'm feeling down or unmotivated or I just don't want to, I can usually watch one of your videos, Danny, and I'm just like, all right, we can get after it. So I wanted to give you a shout out and let you know that I love you, brother. And uh, he tags me in all, all of his videos. And I've been a little kind of not responding a lot to comments and videos lately because of all the stuff that's going on with work and, and at home. And I get that way. So, you know, when I get to, when I get in my, I, I don't want to say depression, but anxiety. I have this tendency to just sort of isolate and... Um, I'll still train, I still post videos, I still respond to comments, but I don't talk to a lot of people. You know, I'm not reaching out, and I look at my phone and I see the numbers, people are calling, they wanna to talk to me, and I just don't wanna deal with anybody. You know, I get that way, and I have to kinda of snap myself out of it, because Danny, Danny did make a good point. He's like, you know, you can get away with that for a little bit, and people are understanding, but if you go too long, when you get yourself out of it, they might not, there might not be anybody there. You know what I mean? If you wait too long, the people that love you and support you, they might go away. <laughs> so don't take that for granted. And I, I got you loud and clear on that. Um, and thank you. You know, some it sucks to hear that sometimes from people you care about. But, you know, honesty is the best policy. At the end of the day, real friends, you know, we don't have to be cruel about telling the truth. But telling the truth is important at the end of the day you really want to know where you stand with people and i really value that um i think that's the reason why uh i don't at, in my work relationships and uh, anywhere i don't handle passive aggressive behavior very well i don't i don't like it when somebody acts one way to my face and then another way behind my back to me that is like that's the biggest sin that a person can commit. And it's a it's an absolute breach of trust. I call it death by, you know, murder by character assassination. And we all do it. We're all guilty of it. Like, if you've ever talked shit about somebody that you've been nice to in real life, you know, you're not that fucking guy, whatever. Like, to say I've never done that or I'm not guilty of it would make me an absolute hypocrite. But... Um, when I find myself doing that, I really try to like check it, you know, like, oh, no, don't do that. Um, but there's some people that's their only mode of being, you know, you, you, they, they're very charismatic people and they draw you in super close and they would get you to open up to them. And then you find out that they're just railing you in the back room as soon as you leave the room. To me, that is just, that's the feel. It's like rape. It really is. It's, like, it's just an absolute abuse of trust and it just... It, it hurts, you know, uh, especially if you, you feel so stupid because you're like, God, I trusted that person. You turned out to be just like the rest of them. Uh, why am I mentioning that? <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. But Danny, I love you. And uh, this one's for you, brother. In life, I'm always learning. You know, even to this day, I won't compete without a trainer. Anytime I've needed knowledge I've sought a teacher if you will like with boxing I'm, I'm going to a boxing gym and I'm learning from a trainer uh, with powerlifting I still use people to help coach me at work at work sometimes you get to a position where you are the ultimate authority we all have our bosses to report to but I'm constantly learning and uh, for me it's dealing with people and learning how they operate now, guys, I have a really good reputation in Las Vegas, and I've been working for years, and I know everybody. And generally speaking, when I walk onto a job site, I recognize most of the people there, and I'm friendly with just about everybody. And people ask me, like, what's your secret? Like, how do you, how do you manipulate people? And I'm like, you don't. You really don't. But I, what I always tell people is just be yourself. And even if people don't like that, what you are, or have issues with your personality, if you are your authentic self, if you are just you, if you can manage to be just who you are, it, you will over time be, show consistent behavior, patterns will emerge, and people will like working with you because they'll know what to expect. Now, 
you can do things like act friendly and smile. Like that's not, I don't think that goes against you being who you are. If you're a grumpy puss, <laughs> if you're just walking around angry all the time, yeah, maybe you go, there's things we can work on <laughs> that doesn't go against your, it doesn't make you a liar if you act happy and you're in a bad mood. But, you know, if you're one of those people that is just like friendly to everybody's faces and then the second they leave, you're just gossiping about them or tearing them down or saying how awful they are. Or if you're also one of those people that's like afraid of your position, getting taken by somebody else or you're insecure and you're willing to throw somebody under the bus so you don't look bad. Um, a lot of times when we make mistakes, uh, upper management can come down really hard on you. So you know in emergency mode that fight or flight kicks in you're looking for somebody pin the blame on it's not my fault i swear to god i didn't do it and a lot of guys will just chuck the next person in the ladder under the bus he did it you know like don't do that try to own up to your mistakes but one thing i've one lesson i learned this week is sometimes you got to take the l um i'll often try way too hard to plead my case because I don't like having my integrity question, as I imagine a lot of people don't. But I've had a couple of issues that cropped up where the person above me just didn't believe me. He just said, figured I was a liar, incompetent, whatever. And me trying to plead my case actually wound up making me look more guilty than if I would have just said, yeah, you know what, my bad. We'll fix this moving forward. Uh, because I had, I, I had evidence and I was like, what the hell? Like, I know, I know I'm right. And then you show them the evidence and they still think you're lying to them. And it's like, I had this one incident uh, a few years back when I was working for a different company. They had a hole. The holes need to be covered on construction sites. Now, this hole had a little two-foot wall around it in a square. So it looked like a little chimney sticking out of the ground. And if you walked by it five, ten feet away, it looked like it was open. And underneath it was a big tank. And in that tank, they had scaffolding set up, and they had planks on top of that scaffolding. So that hole was covered. Well, state regulatory came by, and state can be really, man, those guys are harsh. They walk through, and they just write, companies are terrified of state. So this guy walked by it, didn't actually walk up to it and look at it, and he said it was an open hole. My boss was infuriated. I came in that next morning, and she was there waiting for me. And she said, you, I told you to cover that hole, and you didn't. And I was talking to my boss, and I said, yeah, no, the hole's covered. Like, you can go out and look at it. Didn't want to hear it. Did not want to hear it. And I was trying to plead my case. And I knew I knew I was 100% like, I know the hole was covered. Absolutely. You had to go up to it and look in the, look in it. If you look in it, it's covered, I promise you. But in this instance, they did not want, they just, all they wanted to hear was that, I was going to fix the problem moving forward and it wouldn't be an issue. In my mind, I'm thinking logically, like, but it's covered. Like, I didn't, you, you are wrong. Doesn't want to hear it. Does not want to hear that at all. And it even got to the point where the person told me if I don't stop defending myself, I'm, it's going to be a problem. So she basically said, shut up. And I had my coworkers around me, so I just sat, I just, okay. I'm sorry, I'll fix it. And then after they left, I walked out there and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, I, that blew my mind. I just don't, I don't get it. it was like direct evidence, just to walk up to it and look at it. I, to this day, that stuck with me. I'm like, okay. Um, and, you know, everybody was consoling me. They're like, wow, how'd your SG1 go? Because they all knew about it. I guess they were talking about it in the morning when I came in. They were waiting for me. And I'm like, the hole is covered, dude. Did any of you actually go up and look at the damn thing? <laughs> you know, like, what the... F I'm the only one that apparently actually goes up and inspects stuff, you know. I guess people can't get out of their carts to look at things. Um, well, I had a similar situation this week. Uh, it had to do with um, report uploading. I had a, uh, There was a certain date I needed to upload an important report, and I said I did. And then they were saying that it was showing that it was uploaded a couple of days later, which means I'm a liar, right? And I logged on and I looked at it and I was like, oh, it's not there. So I uploaded it, sent the email and shit rolls downhill. So it became a real big problem and there was butt chewings and all that. Not good. Not good at all. 
But I'm scratching my head, and I'm like, I know I uploaded that. So I'm looking at my phone. I open the app up. It's Procore. And uh, I'm looking through it. I'm looking at the dates on the photos, and I'm like, no, I don't see anything there where you can move or you can't even delete. Um, now, the app's known to, if you add a bunch of photos to a report, it will sometimes not upload those photos but what it will do is it'll generate another report saying the report is incomplete so you know they don't didn't get uploaded like oh okay so then you go in there and re-upload them that that's expected there was no report for this one it's like it wasn't there like i never did it to begin with so i'm thinking okay maybe i'm crazy maybe i didn't upload it maybe he is right um uh, my phone was getting full and I had to delete some files because I use it for recording and I fill it up with video really fast. So I went to my gallery my where all my albums are and I go through all my folders and delete a bunch of stuff and there's this little thing that says view all folders. Oh, I click on that and this huge list of fi uh, folders came up and one of them was Procore. Oh, interesting. So I opened that up and it had saved all the pictures I've taken and right on my device i'm like well there that's why i'm running out of room i had no idea that folder was there oh let me look sure enough i go to that date and that uh, the file was there now i didn't move it into that it, uh, the only way that the file could be there was if procore generated it and then it put it in there oh cool there's my proof it says it shows the correct date on it it shows i'm not crazy i did do it it's right there some next day I show my boss <laughs> I'm thinking yay I exonerated myself and I looked at it showed him the date on it and he you know what he said to me well the date can be edited <sighs> okay I, yes it can I looked at it I'm like yeah yeah you can edit the date all right there you go that's the level that of uh, where the mental mentality we're working with here thinks that I'm going to go through that to lie about rather than admitting that I forgot to upload something I'm going to go into my phone and find hidden folders and edit dates and like you need a forensic scientist and I'm like, like but I don't even know how to but I can barely use this software and do stuff you know. so right then and there like I just was defeated. I just was like, just deflated. I had no answer for that whatsoever. And uh, it was that day, right that minute, where I realized all this would have been solved if I would have just said, you know what, I didn't do it, and I'm sorry, and I'll fix it moving forward. Instead of me trying to plead my case and show you I did not do this, I did it right, and creating more dragging it out further if, if I had just said I screwed up and I will make sure it doesn't happen again that would have been the end of it and now I'm like well hey I did learn you can edit the dates on photos I'm not sure why you'd want to what, what would that do for you seriously like what, why would you even have that as a feature like isn't the point of having a timestamp on a photo so you know when it was uploaded like why would you even want to edit that like Give me a comment. Like, tell me why that, that feature would be useful. Would that, you know, like, for, for what possible schemes would you want to be able to do that? <laughs> well, maybe so that in this instance, yes, so you could go back and uh, change the date to prove. Yeah, okay. All right. So, but nothing. All nefarious things. <laughs> I just, that's what, that's, I guess that's what I'm talking about. Is sometimes you have to take the L. A life's a chess match, you know what I mean? Like, you don't always have to be right. Sometimes not being right is the path of least resistance. <laughs> you can have the date. I just... <laughs> Andy's out! <laughs> no, but the lesson I've learned in all of this is, you know, crap does roll downhill, and uh, we've had a string of incidents, so I know that uh, my management's under a lot of stress and looking at it from that lens if I keep the mindset of what can I do to help instead of like what can I do to protect myself 
uh, get better outcomes. And I've noticed that with just even with the problems with my uh, wife and her physical limitations she's having right now and just I mean, pretty much any issue. If I'm thinking a little bit more about the people that are around me than I am about my own needs, uh, I get better outcomes when interacting with those people. And that's kind of what I learned is like, uh, I get very defensive, you know, especially if somebody questions my integrity and then it becomes like a personal thing. And I have to remind myself that, hey, we all, we're all doing our jobs. And, you know, if you're thinking about the needs of other people and you're trying to alleviate their stresses, chances are it's gonna benefit you as well. And, you know, it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. Man, life, life is a chess match. But, you know, just like anything else, if you're consistent in, in your behavior, in your principles, and none of us are perfect. Like, we're all not going to perfectly apply our principles. There's going to be times we are when we are hypocrites. There's going to be times when we do make exceptions. But generally speaking, if you're trying to do the right thing by whatever your principles are, you're probably, probably going to have a pretty decent outcome. Especially with the equation of time and consistency, you know? If you're doing the right thing over a long period of time, people notice, patterns emerge. What can I tell you? So, if you made it this far, I told you I was gonna tell you a little bit about the training I'm doing. Um, I asked Bobby Forever to write me a few weeks of training. I said, hey, I gotta get this training program started. Can you write me a few weeks? I gave him my requirements and he wrote out uh, three weeks a program to get me started and I gotta be honest with you I'm really liking it and uh, I think we're I'm gonna ask him to program for this next competition for me uh, I did tell him I'm gonna still collaborate uh, with the guys I've been working with uh, because I've made a lot of progress working with guys like Prophet Fear and Rockman and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't continue that but uh, the last program I did was called the Candido six week and it was brutal, and I was tossing up doing that again. Um, but I was wondering if, like, is there any way I could streamline it a little bit to take, you know, to make it a little, little easier? Like, I am 50. <laughs> I'm a really strong, really agile 50 year old, but I still have the problems of a 50 year old. Like, recovery is an issue. So, like, if you could just take a hair of that volume away, some of those accessory works, and maybe condense it to just be mostly barbell work that would be super beneficial to both my time how long it takes to train uh versatility and of course recovery and uh, so far that's that's what we got here as you can see with these uh slides this is what my program looks like for the next few weeks so him and i are collaborating again i don't know if i'm ready to call you my trainer i haven't decided yet but uh, but we're, we're definitely working together. So hopefully good things will come from that. <sighs> this video, what is it? Where are we at? All right. I should probably get back to work. Um, no, I'm done for the day. <laughs> oh, I take the kids to the boxing gym. Da -da 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 -da. No, I got to do my week two bench. Week one bench. Now I'm just babbling. All right. I love you guys. I will see you on the battlefield.